Let's give God some praise in the house. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Man, look at your neighbor and say, you're in the right place to be. Are you ready to receive? Give your neighbor a high five. Give him a dab. Give him a hug. Go ahead and be seated. I'm excited to be with you guys tonight. Before we get started, uh, we got a few announcements. Who was in Holy Warriors last night? We got any Holy Warriors in the house? Right? Who's ready for the marriage seminar? Oh, man, come on. Marriage seminar. We need it. We need to be taught right, right? And for this Sunday, I got this shirt right here. Um, we're going to be doing a massive baptism this Sunday, right, for all the people that got saved on Resurrection Sunday, right? And we're going to give away a shirt. And who's going to get baptized this Sunday? I'm going to have Rob give, give it away. Put the hands up. Leave the hands up. There we go. Give him a round of applause. So, man, I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you guys tonight. Um, I'm one of the Arrowhead uh, campus leaders. Let's give it up for the Arrowhead campus. Right? One of the guys was like, Arrowhead gang or don't bang. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 that's not right. But um, I want to give a shout out to our senior pastors, Pastor Marco, Pastor Lisa. They're out right now. Let's give them a round of applause. Pastor Robert, Pastor Veronica. And I want to give a shout out to my campus pastor, Pastor Joe and Pastor Deanna. I don't know if Pastor Joe is here, but if you're not here, I still love you. Um, I've been coming to this church, I think, since 2010, 2011, probably serving in ministry since 2012, leading in some type of capacity since 2013, ministering the Word of God since 2014, 2015. I'm homegrown. Born and raised here in San Bernardino. I love my community. That's why I can't stay out of the community. I love, I love San Bernardino. My heart's for the city and to see it turned around. And what better place than to be here at the Way World Outreach to see that change take place, right? And um, before we get started, you know, uh, I had I was already preparing something so when you know when your number gets called you're either ready or you're not ready and if you're not ready there's going to be a million of excuses to arise and justifiable reasons but when you're ready you have a clear response here I am here I am so I wasn't planning on being here but here I am so um I want to talk you know in life Time. I want to talk about time. Time dictates so much of what we do. Time tells you what to do. Time tells you where to go. Time tells you who to meet with. Time is literally setting you somewhere to do something. Right? Some of you guys, you set time to go to work. And you're very deliberate with going to work. You're very intentional with going to work. Some of you guys don't even like your job and you still go to work when you don't feel appreciated. You're not treated right. You still go to work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. You follow through. So you set that time whether you know that or not. A lot of times we set times for Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm and the beach Right, and we set that time with our families because we want to create memories and we want to build on that quality time, right? Some, some of us, we set time to go to the gym because we want to be healthy, we want to look good, we want to feel good. We set time for the movies. We set time for the Super Bowl. We set time for our favorite television show. Time is literally telling you what to do, where to go, and you don't, have, you don't even have no control. 
time. And there's a time for everything. But God's timing is always perfect and precise. And in order to get in line with God's timing, you got to make sure you're in tune, you're in step, you're in sync, you're not missing a beat, you're listening, you're receiving, because God is always speaking, but are you in position to hear? Are you in position to receive? Are you in position to take what he wants to give you? The title of today's sermon is Setting the Time. Let's pray. Father God, we love you so much, Lord. We ask you, Lord, right now, Lord, speak to our hearts. We're here, and the time is now. We're setting time aside to hear, to listen. And Lord, I know it's been a crazy week for some of us. It was hard for us to get here, but we're here. We're ready. We want more of you. We're hungry. We're thirsty. Lord, release from heaven what needs to be spoken in this church. I pray that we have the hearts to receive, that our ears would be open. Holy Spirit, meet us right now. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, for everybody here, Lord, whatever season that we're in, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that we grasp and we hold on to what you're about to release. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. We all say amen. amen. Time. Time. Time is something that you cannot get back. Time is something that is so, so precious. But when... We set time for all these things because these things are important. Work, it's not negotiable, right? If somebody asks you to do something Monday at 8 a.m. when you have to be at work, what are you going to say? You're going to say, no, I have to be at work. I can't do it. If you're going to Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm this Saturday and somebody asks you, hey, can we do this or can we meet up? You're going to be like, nope, in a hot second. I can't meet up with you because I'm setting the time. And when you set time aside, you set it aside for a specific reason and a purpose, right? And let it be, let, let, let's just say, you know, God's always trying to get a hold of us and he's always trying to speak to us. But in order for us to hear him, we literally got to set time aside. Like, you're so busy, you're all over the place because time is setting you instead of you setting the time. Time tells you where to go. It tells you where to be. But why don't you tell yourself at this time, at this moment, I got a destination and an appointment to meet with God because I need to hear from him. And that time should be non-negotiable because this, this is the truth. You set time for everything else but him. And then when you do set time for him, you're so easily to be negotiated out of that time. Like you'll set time aside. You'll be like, okay, I ain't been setting time. So let me set the time tomorrow at 6 a.m. I got an appointment with you, but let you be tired tomorrow at 545. I guarantee you, you're going to say, I'll get back to you later. God has an appointment for you, but why is it that you're always rescheduling him? We're not setting time aside, and when we don't set time aside for God, it's like God is like, yo, I'm here. I know you're busy. I know you're serving. I know you're caught up, caught up in the labor and the work and the effort of ministry, but I need you to sit down for a second. You keep making stupid mistakes. You keep hooking up with dumb people. Maybe if you would spend some time with me. Because you hooked up with somebody, you even posted about it, then you took him off the gram because you realized he wasn't the one. Maybe if you would have sat down with him instead of sitting down with him, you wouldn't make the same mistake over and over, the same dumb investment, the same quick rich money scheme. Because when somebody tells you, hey, I got an opportunity for you to make money, you're all ears. 
But when God's trying to get a hold of you and he's trying to slow you down, you're like, oh, I just don't know if it's that serious. I don't know if it's that important. Time. When is the last time? Ask yourself this. When is the last time you literally put time aside for him? When's the last time? I'm not talking about when did you pray, when did you read your word, because a lot of us leaders, we have that routine where we get up in the morning, we pray, we put on our worship, we put on a little sermon, or you do all three. But when's the last time you set the time? Because when you set the time, that time becomes sacred. And the thing is, is you're not treating the secret place like it's sacred, and since it's not sacred, you don't consider it special. Everything else is higher significance. Everything else is more important. Everything else is more vital. But let me tell you, if you don't sit down and if you don't take time to hear and you don't take time to listen, you are going to be stuck in the same place. Some of us have been serving God for five years and we ain't done nothing. We ain't gone nowhere. We ain't producing disciples. We ain't making moves for the kingdom. We're just clocking in, we're clocking out, and we're going home, and we're sleeping like we're actually doing something. Setting the time. Point one. Oh, man. I did it again. Uh, point one. God. So I'm talking about setting the time aside for God, but this point one. God sets time for us, but do we set time for him? Because you, there's, there's like an appointment, like when God sets the time, which he sets the time for you, and if we don't set the time for him, we miss it. We miss it. And, and I, read, I, I read through Psalms all the time, but when I read this last week, it just hit differently. Psalms 4.3. But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call him. But let's look at the first sentence. The Lord has set apart for himself, meaning God is handpicking, he's hand choosing, he's getting a hold of people, and he's placing him over here because he doesn't want you over there. Because if you're over there, you might get separated from what he's trying to show you, and you might get separated, or you might miss what he's trying to teach you. So he has to get a hold of you, and he has to remove you from a place, and he has to put you in a different place. This place is the secret place, right? And you got to meet them in the secret. And it's called the secret for a reason. You know, when you tell somebody a secret, not a lot of people know about it. And let me tell you, we could be believers for 15 years, 20. Not a lot of people know about the secret place still. It's foreign. It's uncommon. We visit it only when we're in dire circumstances and we're dying and we're, we're asking God to save us. It's foreign. So you got to get this in you. Like God is literally setting apart himself for you. Like think about that. He's setting himself apart for you, but are you setting that time aside for him? And then we wonder why we're not getting revelation. We're wondering why when, when people ask us to do something, we're just like, oh, let me pray on it. Like, oh, I got to talk to my leader. Like, if you're really spending time with God, you'll have an answer in a hot second. Like, if you're really, like, dialing in, you're really locked in, you're dialoguing with God, you're communicating with God, like you're literally sitting in his presence, you're spending time with him. And then you, 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 it's like, I'll just wait for people to do this and to do that. Like, God's calling you. He ain't calling nobody else. Nobody else wants to do it. Biblical definition of set apart. Because God sets himself apart for you. Tell your neighbor, you know God is setting himself apart for you? Like, doesn't that make you feel important? Doesn't that make you feel special that 
with everything going on in the universe, God has time to literally get a hold of you and say, son, I need to speak to you. I need you to sit down here. I need you to meet me at this time because what I'm about to tell you is going to help you fulfill your purpose. Thank you for the golf clap. Biblical definition of set apart. Set apart means to be holy. Holy. And a lot of times we hear holy, we can't identify with it because we think holy means to be perfect. No, it, it doesn't mean to be perfect. God doesn't expect you to be perfect. He doesn't put that type of weight on you because he knows you can't fulfill that. But this is what he does expect, to be set apart for a specific purpose. In Hebrew, it means kodesh. Set, set means to put in a specific position or place. Apart means to be separated for specific use. So he's basically saying he's placing you aside for something special because you're special. Now, the reason why he needs to set you apart is because he has to set you apart for himself and to himself so that you don't take part in the things he wants you to be separated from. To be set apart is placing you in position to be launched into what God is preparing you for. And that's why when God calls you, you're either going to be ready or you're not. Now, we're talking about being set apart, setting the time, spending time with God. Now, it's all about placement. It's all about positioning. It's all about posture, and it's all about proximity. Proximity means nearness, closeness. So ask yourself this, are you close or are you distant? You can't hear when you're distant. You can't see when you're distant. That's why when God does try to call you, he's saying, hello, son, hello, daughter. You can't even hear him because you're distant. And you're distant from the presence of God. You're distant from the house of God. You're distant from serving. You're distant from ministry. You're distant from discipleship. And you're wondering why you can't get revelation. If God's speaking to somebody today, can I just get one amen? amen. Proximity. It's all about being close. Because when you're close... You can catch what God is trying to release. When you're not close, you can't catch it. The devil will keep intercepting your blessings because you choose to be out of position. God is always speaking. But are we in position to receive. Give God some praise. So point two. Hey, I only got that much time left? Okay. Uh, point two. Let's go to point two. When God calls you, will you recognize his voice? And will you be ready? When God calls you, that's the thing, like God could call you and you're just like, is that man? Like, when you don't spend time with God, you don't even know the voice of God. So it's like when God does call you, you're like, who is that? Is that me? Is that the devil? Is that my leader just talking just to talk, to just to try to get me to do something extra? I don't, think my, I don't think God's speaking through my leader right now. I think my leader just wants me to do something else. See, when you're not spending time with God, every voice is, like, confusing. Like, you're just, you're just uncertain. And in this portion of scripture, let's go to, uh, this is uh, 1 Samuel 3, 1, 10. So when you're, when you're set apart and you're spending time with God, this is what happens. When God calls you, you're going to be ready. You're going to be excited. You're going to be, you're going to have enthusiasm and you're going to be like, come on, let's go. Right? You're going to be ready. This is, this is the problem now. When God calls you, you're just like, well, I don't know if that's really for me. I don't know if I should really do that. You're just, you're just uncertain. And 
you got to know what's from God and what's not from God, because if you don't, you're going to keep going in the same confusing, disrupted, dysfunction cycle. Some of you guys have been in that cycle for so long. So look, 1 Samuel 3, 110. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. So it's saying, you mind you, in this portion of scripture, Samuel is a boy. He's not like matured yet in the Lord, right? And in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare. And visions were quite uncommon. The reason why messages were very rare is because the Israelites' hearts, they were hardened in that season. So he wasn't going to speak because he knew they wouldn't receive because of their hardened hearts. Right? Verse 2. One night, Eli, now Eli is the priest. Eli is like the mentor for Samuel. Samuel, since he was a young lad, he was already ministering and serving in the tabernacle. Right? Right? And it says, one night, Eli, who almost was blind now, he had gone to bed, verse 3, the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. So we're talking about proximity. So Samuel, he's in the tabernacle. He's asleep right next to the presence of God. When's the last time you slept in the presence of God? So when you're that close, you're going to hear everything so loud, so clear. You're just going to be like, man, I know you're talking to me. But when we're not spending time with God, you're like, who is that? Right? So he's sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. And suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel. And in the Bible, God called out Abraham. He said, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham said, here I am. He called out Jacob. Jacob said, here I am. Samuel, we we know what he's going to say. Isaiah, they're having a conversation. Isaiah's like, here I am, send me. Right? It only happened once in the New Testament where God called Ananias, and Ananias said, here I am. Here I am was was a response that indicated they were ready. And they were ready because of their closeness, because of their proximity to God. They weren't distant. Stop being a distant disciple. You don't listen to your leader. You don't listen to your leader. You don't listen to the, to, to the authority of the church. And you wonder why you're all alone with no support and nobody is there for you. Because you choose to be distant. I don't know about you. I want to be close. Somebody tell their neighbor, I got to be close right now. I need to be close. I can't afford to be distant. Because when you're distant, you ain't going to get it. All right. Suddenly the Lord called Samuel and Samuel said, yes. Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Now, he's still young. He doesn't recognize the voice of God yet. And a lot of times as a young believer, it takes time to grow, it takes time to mature, and it takes quality time with God to actually know the voice of God, right? And this is sad, like the only time most of us spend time with God is when we're at church. This is the only quality time you get? Just it, right here? Oh, man. So... You, you got to understand the reason why it's so important to spend quality time with God, because when it's just you and him, no social media, no TV, no distraction, every little thing he tells you, it hits differently. Like you could come here and you could hear God loves you. He has a plan for you, but let you be in that quiet time. Let you be sitting in the presence of God. Let you be ready. Let you be ready to receive and let God tell you, son, I love you. It hits differently. Let him say, daughter, I love you. You're special. You're beautiful. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You could hear that in scripture, but when you hear that in the presence of God, it actually means something to you. You're looking for a word for man, but God, in your way, you're just calling on man. You're like, I I want somebody to call me. Like, why doesn't nobody call me? God is like, I'm waiting for you to call me. 
God's like, you're waiting for everybody to call you. Why don't you just call on me so that I could show you, I could give you, I could be there for you, and I could reveal to you what you need. And you've been in a season where you're all alone, you feel unimportant, you feel like you're being left out. God is deliberately doing that for a reason. He's trying to eliminate everybody and he'll take everybody out for a time. And he's trying to say, daughter, hello, son, hello. They don't want to talk to you. They ain't feeling you. They don't understand you, but I understand you. I know what you're going through. I know what you need. I know what you need right now. If you would just take the time to spend with me. We don't do it. We don't do it. Disneyland's more important. Work's more important. And the reason why you don't negotiate out of work is because there's responsibilities tied to that obligation. You know you got to pay those bills. You know you got to take care of those kids. And that's why you don't say no to work, but you say no to God every day. Sarah Jakes. Right? We got the women's conference coming up, right? Right? Let Sarah Jakes tell you, lady, that I want to spend time with you. You're going to reschedule your time. You're going to cancel all your appointments. And you're just going to be like, I can't miss this appointment. Or let it be your favorite pastor, your favorite speaker, and they told you, Armando, I want to meet with you. You're going to be like, whoa. Right? We put more emphasis and we'll put more value on a person. When God has all the wisdom, God has all the power, God has all the resources, God has everything that you need, but you got more expectation on a man, on a human being. I don't get it. Back to the scripture. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. And he's, tell, he's telling Eli, here I am. Did you call me? Because he still doesn't know the voice of God yet. Eli's like, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Some of us have been sleeping for way too long. Verse 6, then the Lord, the Lord called out again, Samuel, exclamation point. There's urgency when he calls you. He's not just calling you just to call you. He's calling you to prepare you to do something special for the kingdom of God. And he said, I didn't, again, again, Samuel got up and he went to Eli. He's telling Eli, here I am. Did you call me? Second time. Again, I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Again. Verse 7, Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he never had a message from the Lord before. So look at the background. Samuel was serving in the tabernacle his entire life. But just because you serve in the house of God, that doesn't necessarily mean you know the voice of God. Because there's a lot of people here, you clock in, you clock out, you got the labor right, you got the effort right, but you still don't set the time for Father God. So, he did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. Verse 8, so the Lord called the third time, and once more Samuel got up and he went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Here we go again. Then Eli, then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. Verse 10, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. He's calling. He's been calling you. And the reason why you don't understand yet is because of that lack of devotional time with him. And until you get that right, you'll always miss the call. 
Verse 10, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. So when God calls you, what will your response be? Will you be ready? And will you recognize his voice? Let's stand up. Let's give God some praise. Give God some praise if he spoke to you tonight. Give God some praise if you know you got to go to the secret place. Give God some praise if you know you've been lacking in that time and you know exactly, you know exactly what you need to do. You know exactly what you need to do. And let me tell you, last week I set some time. I set some time. You know, I get up, I got my routine, I read, you know, do all that stuff. But last week I, I set some time because next month our outreach team, we're going to New Jersey, we're going to Baltimore, we're going to Pennsylvania. We got a, we got a, we got a pretty big opportunity for our team next month. And, you know, so I've been setting some time and, and God was, you know, he, he'll get at you, right? So, so the first day I like, I literally, I'm just sitting. I don't even move. I'm sitting, like I'm just sitting. And I'm, and I'm talking to God, I'm like, okay. I know I don't do this enough. I'm sorry. And you know what, I've been missing it. I'm just talking to God, I'm just, I'm missing it. I, cause, I, cause I'm a dreamer, I'm, I'm always thinking. I'm, I'm, my mind's always thinking about something. So for me to sit down is like rare and like just sit. So as, as I'm sitting, I'm like, God, I need you. I know I've been missing it. But right now, I'm giving you this time because I know I can't afford to continue to live my life without sitting with you. I'm sitting. And it, an hour and a half went by so quick, so quick. And in that little time, I experienced the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, the unconditional agape love, the inexpressible joy that you can't even explain, all because I chose to sit down. I just sat down. And, and, and that night I was going to sleep, like I was like, man, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to spend time with you tomorrow. I can't wait just to sit with you. Like, I can't wait to be close to you. Like, that was so monumental. And it's so monumental for your life, for your purpose. Could it be that we're so consumed with time that time is always setting you and you're not setting it? Thank you, God. So tonight, you know, as we do a call, a lot of people in here, you know you've been, like the, that special secret place time with God, you know that's just, it's just, it just hasn't been there for whatever reason, we've, we've all been there. And you know there's like a decision that you have to make or there might be something coming up in your life don't miss that time. You can't afford to miss that time. So for the first call is for the people that, you know, you're just, you know, I don't, I don't spend that time. I don't set that time. I don't value that time. I don't even, I never even thought about it until I came here right now. But let me tell you, timing is everything. And the time right now is God is speaking to you. He's speaking to your heart. And he's checking to see if you're ready. And despite if you're ready or not, I got good news for you. God is ready to receive you right now. Because you ain't made the time. You ain't made the time. And despite that you didn't make the time, you didn't prepare yourself for him, God, he's preparing himself for you right now. He knew what you were gonna go through. He knew what you needed to hear. And for those people that know, you don't know that you're right with God, I wanna tell you something. God just wants to meet you right where you're at. 
He's got something special for you. He's got a new life for you. And he wants to be a part of your life. In order to get that secret time, that quiet time, you have to receive Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior. That's the start. And what does that mean? It's saying, I deny myself, I deny my ways, I deny my wants, and I'm choosing to follow you. I'm choosing to put my faith in you, and I don't choose to put my faith in myself any longer. And you don't know how it's gonna work, it doesn't matter how it's gonna work. You let God do the miracle, you just say yes today. So if God's leading you, if God's speaking to you, the moment you came in, you knew God was speaking to you. You knew there was something that you had to do. You knew there was a change you had to make. And this is the change right now, is you saying no to yourself and yes to him. On the count of three, if you wanna receive Jesus into your life, if you want that new start, if you want the forgiveness of sins, if you're saying, you know what, my devotional time, it's all whacked out, but I want to get it on today. If that's you on the count of three, raise your hand. One, two, three. I see that hand. 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 Just start coming. Start coming. This is your time. This is your celebrate. Celebrate. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. God is separating time for you right now. And he's saying, son, I'm trying to wake you up. Daughter, I need to spend time with you. What can I do? And you know what you could do is say, Lord, yes, I need you. Right now we're gonna pray and then altar workers they're gonna they're gonna pray. Right now, if you're if you're out there, stretch your hand to one of these people. God is meeting them right now. Right now in this place. Come up, come up, come up. This is your time. This time is special. This time is special. This is a pivotal moment in somebody's life. Somebody will never be the same again. Their devotional time will never be the same again because of this moment in time. This moment in time is gonna change your time. It's gonna change your life. You will never be the same. You'll never be the same again. We're gonna pray right now. Father God, everybody lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. This is a sign of surrender. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your truth, with your love. Fill me with your power. Right now, I deny myself. I deny my ways. I deny my wants. And I choose to follow you. From this day forward, I give my life to you. I surrender everything to you. Father God, cleanse me from the inside out. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him. Come on, saints, pray. Fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him. Holy Spirit, fill him, 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 fill him. Stir it up. Stir it up, stir it up. Fill him, fill him, fill him. Fill him, fill him, fill him. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Let's give Jesus a hand of praise in this place. We got some people up here who are surrendering their lives to Jesus. We had more than 300 people do it last weekend. We got hundreds up here right now. Would you just give God some honor and some praise in this place? We are in a unique place where God is moving. How many know you need to set some time? Would you give Andrew Alcano a round?